Good morning, everyone. It's Judy. It's um, April 26, 2016. And today, um, I want to talk about this transgender uh, bathroom conversion thing. And um, I have a heavy heart regarding this issue because it, it doesn't make sense to have men who have penises go into the ladies bathroom just because they feel like they're a woman instead of a man. Um, what about the woman who don't want to have a man's penis in the same room with them when they have to go to the ladies room? I mean, this violates the heterosexual woman's rights um, while trying to be compassionate uh, to trans the transgendered. You're violating the the heterosexuals' rights and their belief system. Um, I did a video um, several days ago about that the um, the rainbow belongs to God. And I read from the Bible where after God destroyed the world, you know, after through through the flood, he he gave the rainbow as a token of, of his covenant. He made a covenant with everything that's alive on the earth. He made a covenant. That's an agreement that he can't break. And as a sign, as a token, to remind every living creature on the earth, and for God to to keep to his promise, created the rainbow, which would appear after a rain, to, to remind everybody that he would never do that again. He would never destroy the world again by water. And when you take that beautiful rainbow, that gift that God gave us, and attach it to something that he declared an abomination, and put it on a flag, and wave it, you're slapping God in the face. That's actually what you're doing. You may not be doing it with intent. Okay, you may be following the crown. But... In actuality, that's what you're doing. And with this transgender issue, first of all, there's no proof scientifically through DNA that you're born anything other than the sex that you're born. There's no scientific documentation they could look at your brain, they could look at your hypothalamus, they could look at your blood work, they can look at your uh, uh, all of your uh, chromosomes and everything. But the DNA is either male or it's female. And what you're doing by trying to turn yourself from a male to a female or a female to a male through hormonal um, uh, therapy, and um, through surgery, you know, you could take your penis off and create a vagina, but if you take another test, you're still going to come up a man. And actually what you're doing, you might not realize this, like with the people with the flag, but you're telling God that he's not perfect. You're saying to God, by declaring this and trying to mutilate your bodies, that God made a mistake on you. And God doesn't make mistakes. He just doesn't. And there are severe consequences that you may not be realizing uh, by doing this. God said it everywhere in the Bible. He will not be mocked and he will not be scoffed. And God cannot lie. Okay? And he's perfect. Who would call God a liar? Only Satan would do that. 
okay? And only people that follow Satan would call God a liar. Who wants to be God? Satan wants to be God. So if Satan can convince you that God made a mistake when he made you, Satan's going to be the one to fix you by you mutilating your body. And there are dire consequences for doing these things. Um, when, you know, Adam and Eve were in the garden, they were spiritual beings. Um, they did not come from a woman's flesh. Okay, they were not birthed. They were created by God. He made them. Um, God created the first man and the first woman. First created Adam. And then he put all the plants out in the Garden of Eden. And he told Adam to go and name everything. Adam named everything. Every plant, every herb, every tree, every horticultural item. He, he put a name to it. And then God saw that... Uh, man needed to help me so he made he put him into a deep sleep and he did a surgery he he opened up his chest and he removed a rib and from that rib he made a woman and closed up the wound and um, he he made woman to be a help me for man okay and um, he gave, he, they didn't know about evil, they didn't have eternal death, there was no pain, there was no suffering. And the only God, the thing God said was, don't eat of the tree of knowledge. Okay? Now, where was this tree of knowledge? If you read, it was in the midst. They use the word midst in the Bible, M-I-T-S-D, midst. Well, what is midst? Midst means it's somewhere around hovering in the air, okay? So Eve was beguiled by the serpent. She was seduced. And the serpent, once the serpent seduced Eve, okay, he polluted the spiritual body, okay? And, and he joined um, with, with the, the, the spirit side of man, so, if you look at us, after God cursed the earth, after that was done, he cursed the earth. I mean, we're at the end now in the last days where God is going to clean everything up. And we're going to be, um, the ones that have come for salvation will be given a new body uh, of bone and, f and flesh, but not blood. And we will have an incorruptible body that will not be... Uh, subject to sin, pain and suffering and death. We'll have eternal life in the way God planned it um, when Satan gets thrown into the pit. But when this all started, um, Satan and man fused, okay? And uh, when Eve gave birth to Cain and Abel, um, uh, Cain murdered Abel. Okay, because there was two seeds that were produced. These, these children were twins. One was a good seed and one was a bad seed. And the bad seed devoured and killed the good seed. The serpent ate, ate the other person. He devoured it. It says it everywhere in the Bible that, the, that, that Satan lurks around looking for whatever he can devour. That means eat and and, and pull into, inside of him. And if you put the words Cain and Abel together, what does it mean? Cannibal. Okay? So if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life to stand in between you and your sinful flesh, it's going to devour you. That's why you see people... Um, and backsliders like you know Whitney Houston was a child of God when she came out um, uh, publicly with her talent to sing. She came from a family of Christian believers. They sang gospel music in churches. They were believers, okay? And you could see it all over her. She that she was a child of God when she first came out, and she went into Satan's system. Uh, Satan owns everything in the world, including the entertainment system. And once you go into one of Satan's systems, you become a slave. 
to that system. You sell your soul for fame and fortune. Okay, so now it's hard to follow God because you have all these drugs around you, people trying to feed you coke, people trying to get you to fornicate, people trying to get you to do all these things, and you're immersed in your contract now with the devil to do so many concerts a year and put out so many albums or whatever. And you know, uh, um, you're working for Satan now once you go into those systems. So you can't serve two masters. You see, and this is why um, poor Whitney Houston fell and uh, the drugs and the lifestyle that she got involved in pulled her under, under the water. Satan grabbed her and took her away, took her salvation away. Okay, and this is how people fall into uh, the lust of the eyes um, immoral sexual activity um, and Satan convinces you that it it's okay because now society has actually accepted it but has God accepted it no God's Word doesn't change and um, I just this is just a warning I mean you know I, as as someone who reads the Bible and understands what God's Word means because I'm not personally involved in the things that the world are involved in I could see it from a different perspective and I'm not condemning anybody it's not my job to condemn you it's my job to warn you okay because if you're not reading the Bible you're not in the Bible because if you were in the Bible you wouldn't be doing these activities and if you had the dwelling indwelling of the Holy Spirit uh, you you would have a problem staying in these sins while the Holy Spirit resides in you because what the Holy Spirit does is it sharpens your conscience so that because the Holy Spirit despises hate sin so if your flesh wants something that's sinful, the Holy Spirit now is going to bonk horns with it, and you're going to feel that inside yourself, and you're going to have to make a decision. And you may not be strong enough, you may be a work in progress, but eventually, if you stay in the Word of God, you're going to push out, with the help of Jesus Christ, you're going to push out that sin. And um, I don't want you to get caught in this lie, this big transgendered lie. You could take off your penis um, or you can close up your vagina, whatever you want to do to change sexes or you can put on a dress or put on a suit but if they take a blood test on you, you're still a man and you're still a woman. You're still the way you were born. Um, so God, Jesus Christ has straightened this gender confusion out for many many people um, if you don't turn to Jesus Christ to give yourself peace to align your spirit with the way God made you so you can have peace okay Jesus Christ is the only one that can bring everything into perspective until then you're going to be at Satan's mercy and if you believe his lies that you ought to change who you are, he doesn't care about you either. He just wants you to disgrace yourself and to slap God in the face. And when he's done with you, he's going to flip you like a cigarette butt because that's who he is. He didn't care about you. Okay? So please, if you haven't come to the Lord, consider my words. Consider God's words because I'm honestly putting this out. Um, out of true concern for the for your everlasting life it's people will die from ignorance it says it in the Bible God is not going to save you because you didn't know that's why the Lord said that one way we know we're in the last of the last days is that the gospel will go forth 
and be preached everywhere on the planet. And that means, what the Lord means by that is that everyone had a chance, so to speak. And if you didn't take the opportunity, you put the last nail in your coffin. It's out there. The information is out. Okay? I'm here because I have 500 friends and um, I feel responsible to wake some people up. Obviously, there are some people within that number that need to wake up. Some of them won't, but maybe some of them will. And um, yeah, I'm just here to, to pass the gospel, the good news that you don't have to perish, you can be saved. Jesus Christ stands in between um, your spirit. He'll renew your mind. You won't have those lustful thoughts anymore. He'll remove them. As you read the word, he renews your mind. Satan is the one that puts those fantasies in your head, and you can actually have a feel that you can act you're actually, if he, if he puts lustful thoughts in your head, you can actually feel like you had sex with a person because he takes you out of your body. That's how powerful those thoughts can be. But from reading the word, okay, you you cannot you cannot uh, keep that uh, play that tape over and over and over again in your head to get the feelings in your body. He also does that to make people unrequited which is part of Satan's character anyway. He wants to give you this and makes you feel like it's just right there, right at the edge, just, just around the corner. You're going to get it, and you're going to feel so great. If I can only get that, I'm going to feel like my ship came in. And you know you never get it. So you suffer through unrequited love. I'm sure many of you have been in that place. That's Satan's trick. How many have wasted years of their life lusting after something in their mind that never came to pass? And all you did with your life was just sit there and listen to a song and play that tape in your head. Come on. Yeah. It's been done over and over again, but you're throwing your life away. How could you, how do you, could you find your purpose in life if you're just sitting there in your room or in your car or wherever you are just playing a tape it's a terrible thing to waste life you never know what God's purpose is for you by doing that so if you haven't known the Lord if you haven't come to the Lord and you're suffering with Satan's traps okay these are traps they're all traps I encourage you to come to Jesus and just come to him with sincerity. Hang your head with humility and mean it from your heart because he will grab hold of you when you mean it. You know, don't give him lip service because that doesn't fly. He knows your heart. He'll transform your heart. He'll transform your mind. He'll straighten the confusion out in you and he'll turn you into the likeness of him and you're going to love every minute of it because you're going to be free. And you don't have to worry about God flipping you like a cigarette butt, like Satan will do after he's done with you. Because Satan knows your, what your destiny is when you follow him. And he, it's a fight for souls. So hang your head if you're suffering. Hang your head in humility. And just bow your head and repeat after me, Lord Jesus I know I did some terrible things in my life, some immoral behaviors. I've thought lustful thoughts. I've coveted. I've had foul language. I've drank myself into oblivion. I've gambled my mortgage out. I've done many things that were against your word. But I want to come to you now and turn over a new leaf. I want you to take charge of my life, Jesus. Like you said you would. I know that you died on the cross for my sins. That the blood that you shed was payment for all those bad things that I did. 
and I want to get my gift now, the gift of grace. I want you to forgive me, Lord, and have mercy on me. I believe that you rose from the dead on the third day. And I want you to come into my life and dwell inside me and lead me, Lord. Lead me to your words, your truth, and your life. I want to have everlasting life, Father, with you. I want to seek your face. I want to be a better person. Please come inside me, Lord. Please accept me into the kingdom. I beg you, Lord, today, I'll turn and pick up my cross and follow you and let you lead me forever and ever. Amen. Now, if you sincerely meant that, I believe you're on the right path and you're a child of God. And he'll work inside you. He'll fix you. Okay? Where there's, where there's a broken foundation, he'll repair it. If the roof is leaking, he'll fix it. You know? if, you, if you got drafts in the windows, he'll put weather stripping. <laughs> He's a carpenter. Don't forget. <laughs> He's a carpenter. Not only a redeemer. He's a carpenter. And he'll fix your house. But you got to have faith. And you got to turn it over to him. Because by yourself you can't do it. It all happened in the Garden of Eden. The curse. That's why when God sent Moses to get, give the law. The law. People couldn't follow the law. So he had to send his only son. To come. Perfect. Perfect man. No sin. Sinless. But he had to be sin and die like a sinner for us so that we could be saved. It's an awesome, incredible gift. Don't turn away from it. There's so much on the other side. I want to do a video um, on heaven and, and how it's going to be on the other side. You have no idea because you don't read the Bible. And you don't have this intimate, personal relationship with Jesus because he reveals these things to his children. So there's so much in store for you. So much more than you could imagine. So I hope this video has blessed you in some way. I hope, you know, uh, someone has decided to come to Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I, I recommend that you buy a King James Bible, preferably with the red letters for when Jesus speaks. And if you don't have a, a Bible, I'll send you one. You can email me at uh, judithcarlone at gmail.com. I'll be glad to send you a Bible and I'll pay the shipping and handling. Um, if you really can't afford one, I'll, I'll send it to you. That's how much I care. So God bless everyone. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. I love you. Stay well and keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon.